Hi, and welcome back to another edition of the Indusoft Web Studio video training series for version 7.1. In this video, we're going to cover VBScript and the interfaces that are associated with it and some more information about it. So what we're going to do in this uh, video, we're not going to cover VBScript programming per se. I'm going to touch on it a bit in some various places to prove some concepts. If you want more information about that, uh, Indusoft has a webinar uh, video that we posted on our website and also on YouTube. You can take a look at that. Another great reference is the PC demo application that gets installed with Indusoft Web Studio. There's some great examples in there. For example, on the uh, Offices screen, there's an example of um, building a URL that we send to Google Maps to show our different offices and where we're at around the world. Uh, so there's there's a great script in there and gives you some good examples. Uh, also, there is uh, on the product DVD there's a VB script reference manual. And this reference manual you can see is a PDF that's uh, over 200 pages long. And in this it contains um, uh, great examples how uh, VB script compares to other scripting languages, uh, VBA for example as well as it gets into variables and data types, logic, and then uh, continues on and goes through uh, great examples in, in uh, uh, a lot of detail. So that's that's something you can use. Because VBScript is so flexible and so, so uh, rich in what it can do, uh, we're not going to have nearly enough time to cover that. So I'm going to cover uh, the places that you can use it and, and an overview of how it is used within the product. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, subroutines and functions and how that fits into the product uh, versus where, where VBScript is actually executed. We'll talk about variables and scope uh, of those variables and additional resources that you can use to get some uh, additional help. So let's switch over into Indusoft Web Studio. Now what I've done is I've opened up the scripting screen that we created um, in a previous video for the built-in scripting language and just put a little divider line down the middle here and then put a rectangle with uh, some text on it. And this text is, is just as a reminder to, to uh, go through these different interfaces with you as a reminder for me. So let's, uh, let's get started here. So to get uh, kind of a quick overview, let's go into the help system here under the contents tab you'll find down here an appendix for VBScript. And here's an overview of VBScript. It's a simple programming standard um, that lets you implement logic and algorithms within your, your project. And this, this really gives a lot of horsepower to uh, Indusoft Web Studio. Horsepower, flexibility, uh, and capabilities. And uh, this uh, covers not only syntax and operators and functions, uh, but we also get the ability to create uh, variables and procedures. And variables themselves are similar to tag names, um, except they are not tag names, and uh, they don't take up uh, tag names. They don't count against your tag count. Um, but there are some instances where you can use those and where you can't use those, so that's kind of based on scope. So that's, that's how we can get away with giving you uh, variables that don't count against your tag count. Uh, procedures can be either functions or subroutines, and uh, there's a little bit of differences. I'll cover those in, in just a moment. And um, uh, the fact that we can use VBScript to access properties, methods, and events from COM objects, uh, probably one of the more important ones would be including ActiveX controls. When we get into the ActiveX video uh, and .NET video, I'll show you how uh, we can use uh, VBScript to actually control the ActiveX objects uh, directly or work. Uh, interact with those directly. Now something that needs to be pointed out, um, when, when we chose, when Indusoft chose uh, VBScript as the scripting language uh, of choice, we, we did it for uh, several reasons, uh, being open and popular and uh, available, but we also chose it because it can run on uh, Windows CE, um, uh, on embedded devices uh, as Windows CE, or also in Internet Explorer uh, as our thin client does. Or, or uh, uh, that that way we can be very scalable and cross-platform, uh, at least across the different Windows platforms from low-end to mid-range to high-end. Um, so uh, VBScript will run not only in desktop operating systems such as uh, XP, Vista, and 7, and and uh, it will also run on server editions as well as down in, in Windows CE and uh, uh, 
uh, embedded operating systems as well. Uh, also note that uh, when you're running on Windows CE or some embedded devices, the manufacturers have to build those operating systems for the particular product. And depending on the, the build, depending on the manufacturer, there is a chance that uh, they did not enable s uh, support for VB Script. If you have a question or concern about that, feel free to contact our support. Uh, Indusoft also has a program where we will happily certify hardware, take the hardware uh, in, and uh, run some tests on it and, and validate the hardware to make sure that it, it has everything that it needs and, and give you a report back. And we'll do that free of charge, not only for partners, but uh, for end users, uh, anybody willing to make sure that uh, uh, they have a certain comfort level with the particular hardware that they want to choose. Um, this um, uh, link here in the help system links to Microsoft Developer Network and, and just a note that it's beyond our control and this link might change but if you click on this link it's going to open up a browser window and that will give you um, Microsoft's user guide and language reference and how that you can take a look at uh, variables and data types and conditional statements and, and actually get great uh, programming examples so that's uh, uh, something that you have available to you. Let me move this off screen here um, let's see. So, um, what we want to talk about is the different interfaces uh, that can be used within uh, Indusoft Web Studio. And there are several, and these are basically what I have in that rectangle on that screen. There's global procedures, uh, graphics script, screen script, command animation, ActiveX and uh, .NET as well, startup script, and uh, script groups. Now the basic idea in here, for example, let's take command animation that might be used on a button. Uh, this can be used scope-wise, and what scope means is where the procedures or the variables kind of uh, live, so to speak. And, and uh, uh, as an example, uh, this um, interface, the object where the script is configured is where the procedures and the variables uh, happen to live. Um, it gets executed on the server and it can be executed on thin clients as well. And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that um, when we get to a different different page here. But it's also good to note, uh, and this is very important that you understand this, that if you put VB script, let's say for example, on a command animation on a button, uh, that code gets executed uh, at that location, so to speak. Uh, the the VB script itself gets executed there. Uh, also within that, you can also declare uh, variables in that uh, interface. Um, if we go to, let's say, the screen script, uh, the code gets executed there. You can declare procedures and you can declare variables. Now this is a little different here. We have this addition of declaring procedures that you could call from within that screen. And if we were to step out to, let's say, let's go all the way up to the top here for global procedures, you can see that there's no execution of um, VB script itself. So really what we're doing there is declaring procedures, which would be subroutines or function, uh, yeah, function calls uh, that you could use throughout your application, but you're not really executing code there. You would execute code, let's say, in a button or in an ActiveX object that could uh, call the procedure, uh, the global procedure remotely, and then return a value if it's a function call. Uh, so you have to be aware of where these things uh, can execute to declare variables or declare procedures. Now if we take a look uh, at this chart here, uh, when I started this video series, uh, I believe I showed this chart. Uh, if I didn't show this chart explicitly, it's, it's been updated since uh, uh, we're getting closer and closer to releasing version 7.1. By the time most of you view this, uh, version 7.1 will actually be out. Um, for example, this talks about um, uh, the order in which they're, they're executed and also talks uh, a bit about scope or shows a bit about scope. So for example, if you have a screen script on, let's say, screen A, so let's go back up here to screen script. Here we can define variables, procedures, or even execute. Um, but what this is showing is that the variables that we've created, the scope of the variables or the procedures, live only in this screen. Now I shouldn't say live, that they're, um, they have their own space. 
So if we define a variable or a procedure, let's say in here, let's say we, in the screen script we've defined a variable called uh, temperature. We can use that in the command animation in ActiveX and .NET objects. But if we use a variable in VBScript that's on a screen B, let's say, that actually is a different variable and it will not contain the same value. It could contain the same value, but it's not the same variable. So we can have a temperature in screen A, we can have a temperature in screen B, and they are not uh, the same memory space, so to speak. They are, they are different, unique. They have different scopes. Uh, and a similar idea over here in the background tasks, the different scripts, uh, they would have their own unique uh, variables within the, the space as well. Um, so that's an, a very important concept uh, to understand. Let's uh, scroll down here and um, let's see, is there something here that I need to bring up? Uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about variables now. We've talked a, a quick bit about the interfaces and I'll go through each of these different interfaces and talk specifically about them in a moment. Um, but let's let's talk about uh, variables versus uh, tags. Tag names are global throughout IndieSoft Web Studio, so you can get at tags no matter where you're at. As I mentioned, the the variables live uh, within their own scope space, and that's defined through throughout here throughout this piece of help. Um, you can use uh, IndieSoft tag names and or uh, built-in scripting language within a VB script, uh, anywhere within uh, any of these interfaces, just by preceding it with a dollar sign. So for example, if you have a tag name called tag1, uh, if you put a dollar sign in front of it, uh, then you can use it in a VB script um, interface. Uh, the converse is not true. You cannot use a, a VB script variable uh, out in a, a built-in scripting interface. It, it only goes the other way. So. Um, because we charge uh, basically on tags, um, we want you to use more tags, and uh, but we give you the ability to use uh, VBScript uh, variables wherever you need to. Um, the uh, VBScript variables do not count against your tags, uh, tag count. And uh, another point to mention is that uh, VBScript variables can be multi-dimensional arrays. When we first in one of the first videos we talked about um, tag names being uh, we can support arrays but it's only single dimensional VB script variables can be multi-dimensional arrays up to 60 dimensions uh, as a matter of fact even though uh, most human beings can only stand, understand three or four different dimensions uh, for multi-dimensional arrays uh, VB script supports uh, up to 60 Something else that needs to be pointed out is uh, tag names, for example, we have to define them as a particular type. So Boolean, integer, real, string, uh, the different types that we have. By default, VBScript variables are a type called variant. And depending on the contents of the uh, variable, it takes on a, a different type depending on what, uh, what contents is in it. So if you put a string in there, that basically becomes a string. If you put a real number in there, it becomes a, a, a real type or floating point or whatever matches that uh, uh, designator. So uh, it flexes and it varies uh, depending on what you put in there. Something else to, to note, um, as I mentioned in the tag video, uh, Indusoft's tags uh, are zero as uh, false and anything non-zero as true. By default, uh, VBScript treats zero as false and negative one as true. Uh, so that's uh, necessary to, to note and, and how that will work and how that will be uh, understood. So let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, subroutines and functions. As we mentioned up here, uh, not only can we execute uh, VBScript in some of these spaces, but we can define, uh, declare procedures in a lot of these interfaces. Now if we take a look at um, here under the um, interfaces in the software and then under global procedures we can talk uh, a bit we'll come back to this area here where, where global procedures are defined um, but I'm going to jump here into VBScript functions and subroutines to, to give you a definition of that so the two different um, ideas here that we have are sub procedures uh, and function procedures and the concept is basically the same. We can call these remotely from a, one of the other interfaces, 
but uh, the sub procedures uh, do not return a value and the function procedure uh, can be can pass a value back out of it and I'll give you an example of that so here's an example of a sub procedure we would call it convert temp and the uh, VB script would actually be here where it would pop open an input box and ask the user to, to enter uh, a temperature in degrees. And whatever the user enters will be placed in a VB script variable called temp. Then it will uh, pop open a message box that will build this string and show the temperature is and then concatenate the string here uh, with this function call. Now this function call is not defined right here, it's actually defined below. There's a, another function called Celsius where it will pass the temp variable into the function call, then it will convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and return the value here where it will display the temperature in Celsius and then concatenate a space here with degrees C at the end of it. And we'll, we're actually going to do this so you'll see how this works. So this is a sub procedure, but the way that this works is it's um, asking the user to input, gets the value, passes it to a function call, returns the value in here, displays it on the screen, but never passes uh, anything back out to anything else. Remember that a, a sub uh, procedure does not return a value. Uh, and similarly, the function procedure can take in values, uh, but it can return values as well, in this case the Celsius uh, up here. So here's that uh, sub routine again. Uh, this is exactly the same as what was up here. But now when we call the, uh, the function Celsius, we pass it the temperature that was input uh, uh, on the above line, and that comes in here as F degrees. So here's the definition for the function Celsius, which gets called from here. We pass in the temperature in degrees. It gets used here. We do the math on it to convert it to Celsius. We pass that over to the va uh, variable called Celsius, and then that's what gets returned um, back up in, in to, to here when we, from where we called it. So that's the difference between those two. Now, even though these are some pretty simple uh, functions and subroutines, we can have very elaborate, uh, very well thought out, very flexible subroutines that could be uh, could be many, many pages long and do uh, a whole lot of functionality. Um, so what we're going to do here is uh, scroll down and show you that the way we can uh, call these is we can use the call uh, statement in the code. And what I will do is I will literally copy these and just hit control C and I'll go back into the uh, development environment and I'll place a button on the screen just a regular button and I'll label this button convert and I'll put a command on here uh, let's see before we do that let's go uh, we still have that uh, code in the clipboard uh, I will go to the global and then to procedures and here under main procedures I'll double click on that and I will paste that code that we just got in here so here's the convert temp subroutine and the Celsius function and when I save this watch over here under the procedures when I save this we can see that uh, now let's see, go back here procedures now that we can see that subroutine and that function call listed here under main procedures um, so let's go back in here to the button and now under VB script I can do a call and I'll call that um, convert temp uh, subroutine and I have to give it the, the open and close parentheses so that will call that convert temp which will then ask for the input it'll it'll pass it to Celsius get the, the value back and then and show that to you on the screen. But there is a problem with this. There's actually uh, something that I didn't do, but I want to show you how this uh, works. So notice down here that the output window is, is empty. When I run this screen, I'm going to close this and run, and I go to the scripting screen, I can see my convert button here. I click on the convert button. It asks me to enter a temperature. I just know that 122 degrees Fahrenheit is 50 degrees C so I'll click on that and it doesn't return anything. Well why? Well why it hasn't returned anything is we haven't actually defined 
uh, the variable called temp. Uh, so I need to do that. One of the places I can do that, uh, let's see, um, probably not the best place, but I can do it here. I can type uh, dim temp, and that will give me uh, uh, allocation for that space for temp. And now when I save this and run it, oh, notice down here that uh, it told me that that script in line 8, the temp variable, is undefined, and it gives me an error code, and it tells, tells me all about that. So um, that's what prompted me to do that. I'm going to delete that, and now when we run the application, since temp has uh, space allocated for it, uh, we can convert, come in here to 122, say OK. And now it tells me that the temperature is 50 degrees C. So that uh, uh, those procedures now can be used from anywhere within the, the um, application. You don't have to rewrite that code over and over and over again. It makes it very flexible and very powerful. So uh, let's see, continuing on. Um, Oh, something else to point out here, that uh, option explicit at the top here, uh, it's a great idea to keep this. We really recommend that. That basically says that uh, you need to define your variables, and that way it will catch you. VBScript is, is flexible enough to that you don't have to do that, but uh, with option explicit, it forces you to uh, create variables, uh, and it will double check you if you've misspelled them. Uh, tried to enter an, another one, so to speak, and uh, catch you uh, on it as well. Um, let's see. So moving on, we've um, got here under the scripting screen, we did the um, VB script here to, this is a, actually a VB script to call the convert temp uh, global procedure. One of the things I want to point out that's new in version 7.1 is you can actually click on this config button and get this a little bit larger workspace. And, and new in version 7.1, we can actually enlarge this workspace. Uh, so now you can have uh, greater flexibility and see more of your code uh, simultaneously. So that's, again, new in, in uh, uh, 7.1. Something else that uh, you need to know is that uh, uh, when you close a, a script, especially when you've written a big big long script, it will check the syntax to make sure that the that the, the commands are formatted properly and you haven't uh, uh, made any mistakes. That doesn't mean your logic will work, but it will check the syntax. Uh, in addition to closing the script, you can also right click and say check script and the syntax will be checked. In this case, uh, we know that this is uh, okay because it worked. Um, let's see, uh, another thing Oh, we have uh, IntelliSense in the scripting interface, the VB scripting interface. So, for example, if we start to uh, type a VB script command or even uh, an IndieSoft uh, function, uh, let's try, let's say, input uh, box, and then I type space. You can see here that without opening the help, it will tell us the format and uh, all the different um, parameters that are required for that particular um, VB script uh, command. So in here it's looking for the prompt and the title. We're going to give it a, even a help file if we so choose to kind of install our own little help system there for our application. So, um, And this also works, um, let's see, if I use a dollar sign here, we can get at various things that are either IndieSoft scripting or tag names. Uh, let's go take a look at, I think down towards the bottom I use some um, tag names xval and y val for some of the different uh, animations that we did. So you can see that we can get at those through uh, or by using uh, a dollar sign in front of those. Um, let's see, moving on. Uh, let's see, ActiveX and .NET. I know we haven't covered ActiveX and .NET yet, but uh, I'm going to place an ActiveX object on the screen here. Let's go into graphics uh, here under ActiveX. And there's going to be a separate video to show you how to use ActiveX and .NET. I'm going to scroll down here to the Microsoft slider control. Say OK. I think I actually use this over here. And uh, that popped up here in the upper corner. And similar to how I did in the built-in scripting language, here under configuration, uh, under the events, when one of these events happens to that uh, ActiveX object, for example, a click, we can execute the script that's in here uh, and display that on or display that or use it uh, however we want to. So um, 
that is uh, another one of the interfaces that we can put VBScript in. In the previous video, we showed you the built-in scripting language uh, on Mac of X object. And in a similar fashion, I'm going to go ahead and add here to graphics, I'll add a .NET. Now the .NET might take a little bit to, to call up, uh, so I'll go ahead and pause the video while we wait. And depending on how long that takes on your machine, uh, we might be back in just a second. Okay, we're back from that. Uh, just a quick explanation. Um, because .NET objects have to be, uh, I'm sorry, because ActiveX objects are registered, uh, Windows knows where they're at, and .NET objects do not have to be registered, so it had to go do a search. And I just happen to have a lot of uh, .NET objects on my PC, so yours probably returned fairly fast compared to how long mine took to search. So I'm going to scroll down here and let's see, we've got a uh, .NET object called Progress Bar, and I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Now this Progress Bar is the one that you've seen whenever you're downloading. It's the little bar graph that fills up. Um, I'm going to double click on that. And very similar uh, here under Events, you're going to see the list of different events. And this will be different, uh, this list will be different uh, depending on what the programmer of the ActiveX or the .NET uh, object wanted to expose. Um, so this list again will change. Now for example here's click. Um, so we can put a script on it when it, it gets clicked, um, when it gets double clicked, um, so on and so forth. When somebody's moving the mouse uh, over the top of it or hovering their mouse over it, it can, it can act or interact. And you can do a different script with each one of those different uh, events coming back from either ActiveX or .NET. Um, let's see, the next thing is uh, screen script. So we've, we've covered the command animation, the .NET, the ActiveX, and so that's kind of these three. Let's talk about the screen script. There's a couple of different ways to get at the screen script. I can right click, and similar to how here we had uh, under screen attributes, we have the built-in scripting language for on open, while open, and on close. Uh, in a similar fashion, instead of under screen attributes, we can go to screen uh, scripting. And here we can do uh, VB script on open, while open, and on closed. And note that this says that uh, on the on open and on the on close, the comment here is that the, these get executed just once when the screen is open or when it's closed, whereas the VB script that's in this section gets executed continuously over and over again while that particular screen is open. Now I got to that by right clicking on the background of the screen and clicking on screen script. Uh, alternatively, you can get to that by going here under graphics and clicking on script while you're on that particular screen. Now you have to be on that screen uh, to get to that. Now uh, another handy thing that you can do is I can right click on here and say new horizontal or vertical tab group. I'm going to say vertical tab group and I can have this screen open, uh, I'm sorry, this script open while the screen is open and I can edit those uh, side by side. So that's a convenient mechanism that you can use there. Um, something else to point out here on uh, the screen script, let me close this and get back into that help diagram. Uh, so that was here under VB script interfaces in the software. So you can see that uh, that screen script here um, has the same scope, the same value uh, variables can live in the command animation, the ActiveX and the .NET, those three that I just showed you. Uh, so if I define a variable in the screen script, I can get at it from the command animation from the ActiveX and the .NET and, and vice versa. Whereas uh, if I've defined a variable on another screen, I can't uh, get to it from uh, the different screen because that scope does not carry over. Uh, now let's take a look at the graphics script. And if we take a look back up here in this chart, the graphics script, we can execute these. We can declare procedures and we can declare variables. But the scope for this lives in the graphics script interface only. Uh, unless we do something special uh, to that. So let's take a look here under the graphics module, the graphics script. Um, we're going to see something similar to what we just saw on the screen. It's going to be on start, while running, and on end. And uh, what this is, is uh, going to be talking about, we, here's some examples here. When the uh, subroutines are defined and executed, the uh, server where Indusoft Web Studio or CE View is running, the graphic module 
is the viewer task itself, the back, uh, the, the viewer task of, of Intusoft Web Studio. When it's on a thin client or secure viewer, the graphic module is actually the IS symbol uh, control on the thin client itself. Uh, now, what, is, what does that mean or why is that important? This graphics script uh, executes when the viewer launches or IS symbol launches. It's not uh, a particular screen, and uh, a lot of people would, would more than likely try to think of using um, the uh, graphics script as a, as a way to initialize values or variables that might be used on a screen, and that's, that's not necessarily the best place for that uh, because of the way that the scope is defined. Let's go back to here, is that uh, the variables don't actually live up there unless uh, you do something special which is uh, shown down here we can actually put um, graphics dot in front of it and uh, then it will cause it to be uh, the scope will essentially be um, pulled down inside uh, of, of these as well so that's a, an opportunity there um, let's move along and talk about uh, the startup script uh, the startup script itself is uh, a worksheet that's automatically executed when the project is run. Now it essentially runs one time and then is no longer run. Uh, it's run just once uh, when the background task is, is first started. And here's a place where you would uh, be useful for initializing variables and, and different things that, the, that might be run throughout the, the project. So let's show you where that interface is at. So here uh, under tasks, script, startup script, this is where you would define your variables or your procedures uh, that would be declared in, in uh, this space. And again, this is going to be run one time and then it's uh, not going to be run again. Now there's, there's nothing specifically like this where it's run one time for the built-in scripting language. What you would have to do there would be to uh, run um, math worksheet and um, use this execution field to put a tag name in here, run your math worksheet, and then somewhere in here disable the tag that was tied to the execution. That would force that to run once and then never run again. Or you could actually control when you want it to run and run again. Um, but uh, you can, by configuration, make this act like the startup script where it runs once at the beginning and then shuts itself down and never runs again. Uh, moving along, um, task scripts. So here under tasks, uh, here where we have the startup script, we can alternatively uh, insert a script. Now these scripts then get numbered and we can put an execution in here that triggers when this script will um, be run and it will execute. It will run to its completion and then check the execution field uh, again. So um, note that in this execution field you do not put DB script you actually use uh, IndoSoft tag names and expressions from the built-in scripting language not from DB script the uh, this kind of header space you put the uh, built-in scripting in this workspace down here worksheet area is where you put DB script so uh, keep that in mind um, let's see X and let's see. Oh, we yeah, just as a, a note, we can have multiple or many of these. Uh, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but uh, uh, it's probably well into the hundreds, if not thousands. Uh, there's a document that describes how many that we can have. Um, I just don't know off the top of my head, but you can have multiple of these and then trigger these or execute uh, these as needed. Um, so let's see, let's go back here. We've uh, covered the global procedures. I did the uh, subroutine and the function call. Uh, we talked about uh, task scripts uh, here under uh, by right clicking and inserting. And we covered the startup script, the graphic script, the screen script, and then the screen interfaces and the dot, uh, dot net, ActiveX, and command. Uh, something uh, else to point out uh, let's see, already here in the help. I went through and I talked about uh, here under the global procedures, uh, VBScript functions. Um, there's, uh, oh, that's not where I wanted to be. 
here under global. Um, there is Sorry, where is it at? Here it is. Okay. Uh, back here under the overview, there's the Microsoft Developer Network that gives you a good uh, overview of the language. Uh, I mentioned the uh, PC demo application and the VBScript reference manual that we have. In addition to that, and uh, Indusoft does not sanction this website per se, um, but uh, it is a good tool that's out there. If you take a look, it's w3schools.com. Uh, and they have uh, a lot of different tutorials and a lot of different uh, pages with information on here. One of the things that you can take a look at is Learn VB Script. And um, you can go through here and get kind of a tutorial. You can try different things uh, yourself, give you some good examples. And uh, then if you get things uh, um, working here, uh, quite often you can take that script and literally copy it and paste it into Indusoft Web Studio and it will work just fine. Bear in mind that uh, VB Script was created as a as a web uh, automation tool, so there are some things that, that come along with VB Script that are web-based uh, that might not work within uh, Indusoft Web Studio per se. Uh, so sometimes the copy and paste stuff won't work. But if you if you find a conversion, let's say a Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion or vice versa, or some other uh, uh, conversion, maybe flow rates or the different things you might use in an automation or uh, building automation or industrial automation type application or however you use in uh, Indusoft Web Studio, uh, very often you'll be able to copy and paste that directly into uh, Indusoft Web Studio. Uh, something else to point out down here in the help, um, let's see, oh here it talks about the IntelliSense, um, talks about some of the different uh, things here. We also talk about um, logical expressions using conditional statements. Uh, so we can do if statements in here, how to loop and control looping and how many times we'll go through uh, and then tying this into ActiveX and .NET and let's also go back here under the language reference, the different operators that we can use, constants, so for example here is we can define uh, black, VB black is the color black and VB blue is the color blue, so on and so forth, uh, days, um, dates, and um, when we have buttons and icons on certain boxes that pop up, we can prompt uh, that it's a yes, no, uh, or we can use a number to associate that. And I'll, and I'll show you kind of where these get, get used. If we were to take um, and look at the exit button that we put on the header in our application, let's go back to graphics, symbols, I'll go into the buttons and grab the exit button here, place this on this screen. Uh, I know I already have one in there, I'm just going to overwrite that. And if I go into this exit button, and instead of doing that, I will right click on it and edit this. I can scroll down here to the where the command is, and we can see that this is actually a VB script that pops open a message box. First of all, it defines the result or RES variable, and then uh, it takes the message box. Here it uses a built in scripting uh, command from Indusoft Web Studio. Uh, to allow external translation and then it says are you sure you want to exit the application then here it says what will pop up is the VB yes no box so it will have a yes or no button on it there will be a question and then the answer it will compare it against VB yes so you can see um, that these constants are defined so for example here's VB yes you can see that the yes button was clicked and here was the yes no uh, so you can see how those were used. Those are some examples of those. And um, I think that's all I wanted to show you. So I've gone through those different interfaces. Um, we've covered the scope. We've covered functions and subroutines. Uh, don't forget to watch the uh, webinar video. That will give you some more insight and uh, take a look at PC Demo. Hopefully you found, that, hopefully you found this uh, informative. Uh, please give us feedback if you have any, and thanks, and have a great day.